So, welcome everyone. Uh, we're now at chapter 22, Gauss system. Yeah, we went over the basics of electric charge and electric fields in chapter 21. Now, Gauss's law is... Um, Gauss's law states that uh, states a relationship between net flux and Q enclosed or the charge enclosed by um, an object or a surface. Now, um, that makes us, uh, that makes our calculations, some of our calculations, um, really more simple. Now, a flat sheet of paper of area 0.320 square meters is oriented so that the normal to the sheet is at an angle of 64 degrees to a uniform electric field of magnitude 12 newtons per coulomb. So consider that this is the sheet of paper and uh, the normal to the sheet and the electric field is at an angle of 64 degrees. Now, uh, find the magnitude of the electric flux through the sheet. Uh, B, does the answer to part A depend on the shape of the sheet? For what angle phi uh, will give us the minimum value for flux and the maximum value for flux? Now, electric flux is defined by an electric field multiplied by the area of the surface. And that equation is for when um, the, the sheet, not the normal, right? Not the normal to the sheet, but the sheet itself, or the plane itself, is perpendicular to the electric field. And uh, the equation is actually Ea cosine phi. You know, since we're given an angle here of 64 degrees, we use Ea cosine phi. Plugging in the values, we get 12 newtons per coulomb, that is your electric field, times the area of 0.320 square meters multiplied by the cosine of your angle. We get 1.7 newton meters squared per coulomb. Note that this is the unit for electric flux. No. The answer to uh, part A does not depend on the uh, the shape. It does not depend on the shape of the sheet. We are given a flat sheet. Uh, this means that the electric field is a uniform electric field and that the angle between the normal and the electric field is constant all throughout this piece of paper. So the electric field is penetrating the, uh, the plane at, um, at equal angles or at the same angle. It is independent of the shape of the sheet. Now, here we um, understand better the relationship between um, the angle to the normal of the plane and the electric field and how it affects the value for flux. As for the minimum and the maximum value for flux here, what angle phi will give you the largest? So, um, um, in this problem, if the angle were, uh, if the angle were uh, zero degrees, your equation would be E A, and that would be the largest uh, possible uh, value for flux in this problem, because phi is uh, the angle between uh, the normal of um, the normal to the plane to the electric field. So if um, angle phi is uh, zero degrees, uh, that means your plane is directly perpendicular to the electric field. Again, if it's zero degrees, that means your plane is directly perpendicular to the electric field because um, if the plane is perpendicular to the electric field, then the normal to that plane 
is parallel to the um, to your electric field and cosine zero is one so that gives us the largest possible value for flux and of course otherwise if it is um, 90 degrees because you would be getting no flux at all if um, the angle is 90 degrees because um, your field lines would be passing here and again uh, we define flux as flow we can easily think of flux as flow and the field would not be penetrating the plane at all if the if angle phi is 90 degrees all right You measure an electric field of 1.37 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb at a distance of 0.165 meters from a point charge. There is no other source of electric field in the region other than this point charge. What is the electric flux through the surface of a sphere that has this uh, charge at its center and the radius is? 0.165 meters. What is the magnitude of the charge? Now, um, uh, we were considering a plane uh, in the uh, previous problem. Now we're considering a sphere. That means um, what would change is um, the value of A. No? Um, Previously, we're considering the area of a plane, now we're considering the area of a sphere. And the area of a sphere, as we all know, is given by 4 pi r squared. Alright. So, that would be your electric field multiplied by the area of that sphere. The area of the surface of that sphere. And that would give us 4.69 times 10 to the 5th newton meters squared per coulomb. Now, what is the magnitude of this charge? Now, in the previous chapter, in the previous video, um, your one equation for E, or the electric field, is actually um, KQR squared R hat. Now, we are asked for just the magnitude of the, the charge. Now, um, uh, since the electric field is given by kq over r squared and k is also 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught where epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space this uh, this whole fraction here is just your k or your um, proportionality constant and um, if we isolate um, q we get e r squared over k, right? And so um, q is given by r squared e over k. And k is um, approximated as 9 times 10 to the 9 newton meter squared per coulomb squared. Units cancel. We get, um, we were now able to, to know the magnitude of the charge, which is 4.14 microcoulombs. Moving on to our last problem, a hemispherical surface with a radius r in a region of a uniform electric field E has its axis aligned parallel to the direction of the field. Calculate the flux through the surface. Here I have a diagram. We know that the flux through the surface we can just use the amount of um, the, the flux through the basis, also the flux through through the hemisphere, given by Gauss's law. And uh, we have a pretty straightforward answer here. Flux is E A, flux is E pi r squared, or pi r squared E. And so that uh, concludes this um, this uh, video. Um, for the next video, it will be on electric potential. Thank you.